Okay, so I figured it was a good time to do an update on Ping and Lise. This duck with the yellow beak, that is Lise. Ping has been determined by his voice to be a male. He looks like a female right now because he's still in his baby feathers. But give him a little bit of time and Ping will look just like any other male mallard duck. We did our best to raise uh, Lise and Ping both to, to imprint on humans rather than imprint on each other. So we separated Ping and Lise from the other ducks and raised them individually, but unfortunately, it didn't completely imprint them. Now, I have limited experience with ducks, so I don't know if that's because uh, ducks just don't imprint as solid as geese do. I do have um, experience imprinting geese. With geese and with some other birds I've raised, like for example, quail, um, they will imprint, imprint so completely on a human, if raised correctly, that they won't even see another goose or a quail as their own species. I had a little quail of, of California Valley quail that I hatched from a little baby. So he was a single egg hatched all by himself in an incubator. When uh, quail and ducks and chickens and such are hatching, they will actually speak to their mother through the egg and the mother will speak back so they'll imprint on her voice. Well, my little quail that I raised named Quentin, he was hatched in an incubator by himself. So he never heard a, an adult quail or juvenile quail hatching next to him. Uh, all he ever heard was human voices. And so he imprinted so completely on me that when he saw another quail at only a few days old, he was actually terrified of them. So he had no desire to be with other quail or any bird for that matter. He only wanted to be with humans. They were the only species that he associated with as being his own. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. And as you see, I just left to go get some food and Ping didn't follow me at all. He, he just stayed with the other ducks over here. Didn't even really care that I was gone. All he wanted was the food that I have. He's just as tame as any duck at the park. Um, just as friendly, I should say, as any duck at the park. Just a little bit tamer is all. He's not bonded to me. Doesn't really care about me leaving. He just wants the food I have to offer. Anyway, so that is totally different than what I've experienced with some other birds that I've tried to imprint, the quail and the, and the geese. So this made me wonder, was this something I created on accident, a mistake I made in the raising process, or is it just a difference in species? Now, if you think about the differences between ducks and geese, because, you know, you think of ducks and geese as being similar, and they are in many ways similar, but they're also quite different. So socially speaking, the significant difference between de ducks and geese is that ducks, they, uh, they only mate for one season and the males only stick around generally speaking there's a few differences among species only stay around their mate until she starts sitting on the eggs as soon as she's sitting on the eggs or very soon thereafter they typically abandon her and she has to fend for herself and hatch the eggs by herself and then once the babies are hatched raise the babies by themselves and the mother duck she stays with her babies up until they are, you know, pretty much old enough to take care of themselves. And then that's it. They split. And the babies go their own way. Now, wild geese, they have a very different social dynamic than ducks. The mother and, and father never separate until death. Generally speaking, I'm sure there's weird, rare circumstances. The female and male throughout the year are together 24-7 under, under most circumstances. When the female is sitting on the eggs, the male is there protecting her and, and um, being a guardian. Even though he doesn't typically incubate, he is there the entire time. Um, when the eggs hatch, the male stays with the family the entire time. Once the babies are old enough to leave their parents and even go on migration, they typically migrate together. So you may see a flock of, let's say, a thousand geese 
Well, it's actually not a thousand individual geese. It's, let's say, a dozen families of geese that total a thousand. There's actually many separate groups within that big giant flock, which are family groups, the mother and the father and the offspring. Even though they're more than old enough to take care of themselves, they prefer to stay together as a family. So that's a very different social dyna dynamic than how ducks are. Um, and if you look at how geese, uh, when they're raised by a human act, they will typically bond to that human or sometimes other animals. They might bond to chickens if you have chickens or dogs if you have dogs. And they will imprint so strongly that they ignore their own species and prefer to be with your dog or with your chickens or whatever species they happen to imprint on. So I wonder with the difference of different species of ducks, if there are some duck species that will imprint that completely similar to or identical to how geese imprint or to how my little quail imprinted. Um, so I'm going to try an experiment next year since this experiment didn't go over so well. Um, you know, these ducks are plenty friendly when I have food, but if I didn't have this food here, uh, I literally have this food here to keep peeing in the camera shot so I can sit and talk about peeing. Otherwise, he'd be across the yard just totally ignoring me. So I'm going to try. I've got a couple different species I'm thinking of trying. I'm not saying I'm going to try all of the species, but I, I've got a couple in mind. One species of duck that I'm thinking of trying is called a mandarin duck. Uh, one difference between the mandarin duck and most other ducks is mandarin ducks have a much stronger pair bond. So the father oftentimes, I don't think it's as, as consistent as with geese, but the male will oftentimes guard the female while she's sitting on the eggs and help to raise the young. And many times, mandarin ducks will pair bond for many years in a row, sometimes for life, not necessarily always for life like a, gee, like a goose does, but they will oftentimes pair bond for multiple seasons and sometimes for life. They're a beautiful duck. They're also a smaller duck and they're way less messy than a mallard duck, which would make them a better pet on the inside. So one thing you have to do with any duck is you have to worry about putting diapers on them so they don't poop all over the place. Well, mandarin ducks poop a lot less than mallard ducks, and they have smaller poops being a smaller duck. So that's another advantage. I know that's kind of a weird advantage, but that's an advantage as a pet if you knew how messy ducks were. Another duck that has an even stronger pair bond than mandarin ducks are what are called ringed teal. Ringed teal, they will oftentimes breed multiple seasons. It's not an occasional thing, and breeding for life is a lot more common with ringed teal. Ringed teal, another advantage they have is they're even smaller than a mandarin duck. Uh, they're about half the size of a mandarin duck, which a mandarin duck is roughly half the size of a mallard duck. So a, a lot smaller birds. Another thought I've had is trying another goose. Rather than experimenting with more duck species, why not just go back to geese, which I know works and which I know I enjoy having. Well, the downside to geese, geese are quite a bit bigger than ducks. So being bigger and having even more poop going through their system, man, they're just a messy creature. The, the one thing though that I have considered is there are some smaller species of geese. So I'm hoping I can reduce the waste by having a smaller species of goose. Uh, two species that I've considered, and that's the Hawaiian goose or Nene cackling goose, which they're about the size of a mallard. A little bit smaller than, or about the same size as what we have here would be a cackling goose. So we'll see what we go with. Um, I like the idea with experimenting with these new duck species that I'm unfamiliar with. And I also like the idea of going back to what I'm already familiar with, which is just getting another goose. So one thing that's important to clarify is that the goal with this imprinting is to have an animal that's going to be with you all the time. So if you're going to imprint a very social animal like a duck or a goose, it's not fair for you to imprint them and then just leave them out in the backyard. Uh, they're used to being with their kind all the time, especially like a goose. They never leave their mate. So to just imprint them and leave them outside is, is actually not fair to the animal at all. So the plan is to have them inside. That's why I'm emphasizing so much how dirty they are in their waste. I'm not worried about them pooping in the backyard. I'm worried about them pooping inside. Now with most species of birds, ducks included, it's ranges from difficult to downright impossible to potty train them 
very consistently anyway. One way around that problem is a diaper. And you see here Ping has a little duck diaper on just to show you what a diaper is. Obviously we don't have it on Ping while he's running around in the backyard, but this is just to show you what they're like. But the problem is um, with mallard ducks is they poop so much and their poop is so stinky that <laughs> even with the diaper it's kind of gross having them on inside. So that was one of the problems with Ping. Even if Ping would have ended up fully bonded to us, we would have had the problem of the smell and the, and the constant changing of diapers. That's part of what hesitates me about getting a goose is the volume and the size of their droppings. Even a smaller goose is still going to produce a lot of droppings. The good thing with a goose is they eat grass, so their droppings don't have the smell to it that a mallard's droppings do. It's basically their poop smells like grass clippings. So that's part of what makes me lean towards these smaller duck species. They'll, they have less poop than a mallard or a goose, and it's smaller because they're even smaller than even the smallest of geese. They're much smaller. So we'll see what we decide. Whatever we decide on, they'll need one of these duck diapers because even the smallest and cleanest of ducks, you don't want them pooping all over the house. They all sound fun to me. I'm not sure what I'll go with. So go ahead and give me your opinion in the description below. Let me know, what do you think? Should I get a mandarin? Should I get a, a ring teal? Or should I go for a cackling goose? Let me know what you think. Or if you have a different opinion and other species you want to add to the list, go ahead and in the description below, tell me what you think I should get. Whatever we end up getting, it won't be till next spring. Or in the case of a nene, if we end up going that route, it'll be uh, late winter because they, they breed very early. But anyway, it'll be most likely less next spring when we get whatever we end up getting. But yeah, we're going to keep these guys around as pets and egg layers. And uh, it's it's been fun raising them. It's a little disappointing that they prefer their own kind towards us, which is different than my experiences with imprinting other birds. But it was fun regardless. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll show you more next time.